Welcome everybody for this uh, new XLive uh, webinar. We will, uh, we will uh, present you how uh, CPIX 3D Sonar can help uh, tuna fishing industry, especially to avoid bycatch and to uh, make more selective uh, catch decision. So um, we are, um, we are uh, very uh, proud to show you as well the um, uh, feature or the latest feature of CPIX, uh, thanks to years of experience. Uh, we dedicate uh, software for a uh, tuna fishing industry in order to uh, assist you. Um, so first of all, I wanted to, uh, to explain a few uh, technical uh, points regarding the uh, technology uh, currently in use on board uh, tuna vessels. First of all, um, most of uh, skipper uh, in the tuna fishing industry like to operate uh, side echo sonder. Side echo sonder, it is a regular fixed mounted echo sonder uh, with a seven degrees beam angle. Uh, the goal of that equipment is uh, indeed to uh, assess the uh, tuna and to try to understand the spread in between small big tuna and bait fish and small fish. The concern of that technology, there is some limitation about say volume coverage as the measure is very uh, located and uh, limited to that volume. Uh, it's, uh, we can evaluate it at uh, 4,000 uh, cubic meters at, uh, at 100 meter range. So it is a very uh, small part of the wall shore. That's a uh, technology uh, in use on, uh, on board the tuna vessel. Second technology in use on board the tuna vessel is the uh, omnidirectional sonar. Uh, it's very, very interesting for long-range search, omnidirectional search around the tuna vessel, of course. Um, but uh, the concern here is uh, the, um, the uh, coverage, the volume coverage, uh, depending on the uh, tilt angle. So it means to control the wall shoal skipper as permanently to tilt down, tilt up, uh, his sonar, and when it tilts down, he cannot recover the fish over, and vice versa, he cannot uh, always control the fish down when he's uh, trying to detect near surface. So um, that is a concern because uh, to uh, to make a right decision to, to catch a, a tuna shoal, he has to evaluate the realistic quantity of fish, and also he has to understand the behavior of the fish and especially how deep is the fish and how, how fast is the shoal changing uh, layer and, and depth. Uh, in terms of uh, volume coverage, uh, of course, it is uh, much bigger than a classic echo sonder, as we saw before. It is a 65,000 uh, cubic meter. But uh, of course, indeed, it is not the whole uh, tuna shoal uh, under uh, account, uh, taken in account in that uh, technology. So uh, we wanted at, uh, at XBlue to provide an innovative solution uh, to increase that volume coverage. Uh, by increasing volume coverage, uh, skipper can have uh, better uh, information and take right decision. How to do that? We developed CPIX. CPIX is the uh, 3D uh, volumic, volumetric uh, sonar. This one is uh, based on vertical beams and horizontal beams with uh, very narrow beams, uh, reaching a total of uh, 256 um, beams per swap. So total is 512 beams. And uh, this, um, this volume allows to have a perfect control in real time of everything from uh, surface to down. So the operative range is 400 meter and 400 meter depth. So it's like a half sphere from surface to down. And uh, as you can uh, see, uh, the figure is uh, much higher than now about, uh, about the volume coverage compared to classic uh, regular uh, omnisonar and echo sonders. Uh, that's, a, that's a key point, and uh, that's a point number one. Uh, it's volume understanding, volume coverage to have a better understanding of the tuna uh, shoal. But uh, also, we wanted to uh, uh, improve the uh, understanding of the fish itself. So 
uh, in order to avoid bycatch, that's a, that's a goal of the, uh, of the of the product today, is is to uh, to allow uh, capability to select fish. And to do that, we uh, develop very narrow beams inside that volume to discriminate thanks to narrow beams. Um, and then the resolution is uh, is very high. Um, in addition to uh, that um, volume coverage of 4 million uh, cubic meters with one id, uh, CPIX is now capable to, um, to form a network of uh, several uh, transducers uh, that we call a dual system. And then uh, any uh, tuna vessel can, add, uh, can have one or two uh, uh, sonar id like that. And in that situation, we control the full Shoal, the whole shoal, the entire shoal from starboard to port and also uh, from surface to down. So then we cover uh, 240 degrees azimuth by 400 meter depth in real time. And it is, uh, I would like to underline here that point because it, it doesn't need any uh, tilt uh, adjustment for the skipper which is crucial when is is rushing and he has to take decision quick uh, at the bridge. So uh, that is a, a, a technical point. Number one, we have to keep uh, wide control on what, uh, what is going on around the vessel. There is another point, which is the resolution. As I said, the point number two is resolution. Uh, in order to, uh, to do a classification of tuna fish, uh, we are, have to go to the uh, signal, to the individual tuna signal, uh, TS. TS is a target strength, it is a response, it is the echo, acoustic echo on a fish body. On a regular technology, echo sonder on a side, seven degrees beam angle, uh, the uh, tuna fish in the uh, resolution cell is um, is not measured individually. It is a global assessment and the backscattering, acoustic backscattering of uh, several uh, individuals. That is a concern uh, in order to uh, uh, estimate the right TS value. Uh, the resolution cell is up to eight cubic meter at 100 meter distance always. So it is it is a very wide. 3D pixel, if you want to call it a 3D pixel, it's a, we call voxel. And uh, with CPIX uh, technology, we reach the goal to reduce the beam to 1.6 degrees. Instead of seven, we reduce to 1.6, and then we are able, uh, CPIX is uh, capable to recover every single tuna individually. And then the TS measurements, uh, backscattering of the body, uh, is uh, much more accurate. That's a key point. That's a crucial uh, technological point to understand uh, how and why CPIX can bring more information to the um, uh, skipper, to the tuna vessel skippers. So um, uh, le, the uh, backscattering is, uh, can be uh, analyzed like this. It's very known uh, on, on CPIX system. Uh, we uh, can have, uh, uh, from a weak echo, uh, small pelagic fish, like anchovy, like sardine, uh, to the biggest uh, tuna fish. Um, and even, even in, inside, uh, according to the, to the uh, re related to the tuna uh, species, we can uh, uh, distinguish big and medium and small uh, tuna. That's a ranking very known now on a, on a CPIX uh, system for skippers. So based on that principle, we are able to discriminate. So uh, more uh, practically, how it works, um, I, will, I want to present you the, um, the, the operation mode. CPIX uh, come uh, to the skipper with uh, operation mode, pre-programmed operation mode. Uh, it is possible, of course, to tune the, every, every mode. Here it is an example of uh, several mode for a single aid uh, system. Uh, down it is uh, for dual its uh, system. So uh, the principle is for everyone we can have uh, 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 horizontal horizontal 120 degrees azimuth sonar uh, forming. 
Meantime, we can have also echogram inside, and also we can uh, form vertical sonar views. So there is many combinations. There is no about no limitation to imagine a combination and uh, sonar mode that the skipper can uh, tune himself and uh, back up as his uh, favorite uh, operation mode, depending on the fishing stage. So um, in details, uh, we have a capability to for every single id can be port and starboard or only one on port, for instance. Uh, the coverage, azimuth coverage, is 120 degrees. Uh, the um, uh, vertical uh, sonar volumic coverage can be from uh, one degrees to, to uh, vertical to 90 degrees. In that example, it is an example with 30 degrees tilt. So we cover a uh, layer of 30 degrees tilt real time uh, on uh, 120 degrees azimuth. And as well, uh, we can form echogram uh, from the sonar or from, uh, from the horizontal sonar or from the vertical sonar uh, slice. So there is no limitation uh, to, uh, to create uh, echo echograms from any uh, sonar views. Uh, the MMI, how it is on the screen? On the screen, of course, we recommend uh, at least uh, two screens and four can be, uh, could be the best. Uh, on the screen, you recover here um, uh, sonar swaps. The sonar swaps we, we had here is presented here on the middle, here, um, with vertical, horizontal, one vertical, two vertical, one horizontal, two horizontal, you can have more. There is no limitation as well. Um, from that information, from sonar, sonar uh, sources, you can draw uh, echograms from the vertical, from the horizontal uh, beams. Um, you can adjust the range. So for, for tuna vessel, for tuna fishing, we always uh, set up at five, five, four, 500 meters. Uh, and that's it. And in addition, uh, we can uh, propose uh, high resolution up to 8,000 point resolution uh, zoom, echogram zoom. So it is, uh, it is a very, uh, it is a unique on the market to reach 8,000 uh, uh, sampling point on uh, every single beam of 1.6 degrees. So um, the distance in between the two uh, pixels here is only seven centimeters. So from seven centimeters, that's very, very high resolution in the wall volume. So, um, and the last part of CPX is a presentation of a digitalized uh, biomass detection. That means every individual uh, detection, the individual fish detection we have on the classic acoustic presentation is converted as a digital uh, fish, let's say digital fish, digitalized fish, with uh, one point per fish, with 2D mapping from that's like a sky view, and 3D where you can move around, around the boat to understand uh, where is the fish and how deep and how it behaves and so on. And color coding according to the uh, class of, uh, you know, we'll come back on that. So, uh, another um, another uh, key feature uh, uh, that CPX can offer now on uh, on tuna fishing is the capability to set up the echogram uh, angle and uh, and direction tilt or direction uh, from uh, any uh, any swaps can be horizontal swaps with with a uh, angle or uh, can be on uh, inside the vertical. Uh, swaps. Here it is an example with a video. That is a tuna fish uh, you have here. That is a vertical echogram one, vertical echogram two, horizontal one, horizontal two. So horizontal means that is the history of that we detected on the side here. And uh, vertical echogram are the history of what we detected from the vertical uh, sonar swaps. Uh, in practice, uh, by playing with the echogram, inside the echogram, uh, each, every echogram has a, a menu. Inside the menu, we can go to the setup, and the setup, we can play with uh, the uh, uh, angle and direction and opening of uh, the echogram you wish. And then, when you uh, uh, change the setting here in live, you have recalculation, reconstruction of the echogram. That is very powerful. That means now that we see is not that we had before because of the orientation. Again, now we enlarge the uh, beam and you see 
here, there is more dense data available on the screen. Because, because as I said as introduction, CPIX get there everything we have in the water column, and then it's a, it's a matter of uh, it's, uh, to select it and to show it uh, uh, by Skipper to uh, adjust the right angle to show that you want to see. So it is a, it is a very flexible and very powerful for uh, tuna fishing. And uh, for instance, I underline that that is a way that's a good way to uh, draw um, draw a very narrow uh, echogram sector close to the surface uh, in order to uh, detect fish. This, this fish is just over uh, just below the surface at uh, maybe two, two, three, five meters below surface. So that's very, very narrow. And uh, this narrow beam uh, is capable to bring very uh, defined uh, detection on tuna. Um, to explain um, how we process data, you understood uh, we have a real-time assessment in the wall volume with a, uh, let's say, regular sonar pinging transmission, hydroacoustic transmission in the water. Um, that's good, that's calibrated, but uh, we wanted to provide Skipper with more uh, easy to understand data, uh, especially to classify fish and especially to understand the quantitative estimate of the shoal. Uh, to do so, we uh, digitalized every single detection in the shoal as individual point, individual detection. Uh, for everyone, we have uh, the intensity, the backscattering on the body, acoustic backscattering. Of course, that's the main uh, metrics we want to have, but it's, it is a correlated with the ge geography in 3D. That means for every uh, single uh, point here, we have latitude, longitude, depth as well. We know exactly where is the point, where is the fish, and it, its TS value. So this uh, precious information is gathered in a database uh, in the software, and at, at that step, Skipper can uh, request, uh, make a selection inside the, inside the shawl to evaluate the quantity and to evaluate, uh, uh, let's say, TS distribution. I would like to say it can be correlated to weighting distribution or sizing distribution or species distribution. Um, an example, it is an example here of a free shawl swimming along the, the boat and the vessel, uh, the skipper, try to, to uh, to be in standby and having the same speed as the tuna to, to, uh, to measure it and to understand the shoal to, before to take a decision. In that situation, CPIX provides a wall uh, detection uh, from surface to down, as we explained, and everything, uh, everything is detected and, and uh, processed in real time as uh, the uh, spread in uh, TS distribution. Uh, between the uh, stronger echo, smaller echo. So uh, in the red, we, uh, it, we uh, classify it as a class of uh, over 60 kilo tuna, for instance, and uh, the, uh, the blue one are uh, identified as a smaller fish below 60 kilo. That's uh, just an example. That's a real data. You should uh, organize a class for over 100 or over 90, over what you want. So it is, um, it is a matter of, uh, of, um, of calibration in between your catch and uh, the uh, identified signal response uh, in the TS uh, scope. So uh, that is an example of, uh, of a free, free swimming uh, shore um, beside of the vessel. Um, of course, the total amount of fish here, total detection, individual detection is shown here. Uh, more than, in that example, it's a real example of uh, more than 3,000 uh, individuals. Um, then skipper can make a choice to catch this part or this part, or if, if the troll is, uh, is split in two parts, he can make a selection. For that, we have a special feature. This special feature is a virtual send selection. So uh, in that situation, Skipper is about to take a decision. Uh, shoal is going to be more dense, more concentrated, and starting to have a, some such rotation and more easy to catch in a, in a, in a concentrated close to the surface. Um, and Skipper can uh, make a selection with a tool, 
in the 3D tool, you can select that volume and ensure that the, uh, the part of the shawl you want to catch is selected, and then the calculation is based on that selection with the same capability to uh, discriminate uh, the uh, spread in uh, TS values, so spread in uh, different class with the uh, TS distribution, based on TS distribution, and uh, then the number and the percentage uh, per class. So that is a, that is a tool for uh, sending. And from Skyview, uh, you, uh, you see the um, vessel track here, um, the biomass selection here, that's a swaps coverage here, that's a range of 400 meters on that picture, that's 400 meters here. So we, the skipper, did select a send tool. Um, usually the idea, the idea which is smart is to select the lens according to the, uh, uh, per the send the person lens, and then he knows about what, uh, what could expect to catch if he shoot here and come back here to catch the fish, and he has uh, the number selected in, in that uh, volume. Uh, as you understand, in 3D view here, we have a sonar signal projection in 3D, that every single tuna is responding here in yellow, and then you understand the benefits to to digitalize this information in live as fish point here, which is more easy to understand, uh, to evaluate um, realistically. And um, a benefit of that is as well, uh, as you can observe here, there is no vessel wake. There is no vessel wake. We have only uh, fish detection because uh, the fish detection is uh, calibrated and the vessel wake is not responding in that tuna range. So it is, uh, let's say, easy by CPIX to eliminate and to clean the picture, the 2D and the 3D picture, to keep only the uh, wanted fish uh, targeted by the, by the skipper. So um, uh, if we uh, observe now some example, uh, fishing example, I want, I want to show you um, approach on a, on a free shawl. That's the first uh, example I wanted to, to show you today. This one is um, uh, the way to approach the, the shawl and the understanding of the behavior. Uh, we see clearly here that the, sk the skipper been uh, close to the shawl and had um, avoidance effect from the uh, tuna fish. And then that's a, that's a good uh, information for, for him. It, it was just observing and thinking about to prepare uh, a catcher stage. Step two in that, in that history, in that story, it is uh, uh, then he came back to uh, the shore to see if how it behaves. And it seems to be still stuck here and now being more concentrated because of the maneuvering of the boat, of the vessel. And, and last stage to, uh, to understand well the process is you see the behavior of the boat and the behavior of the, of the tuna. And even more concentrated here, uh, it's, a, it's a best preparation for, for skipper to, uh, to be ready to shoot the net on a, on a dance. The vessel is making uh, shoal more dance, even more dance, by, uh, by turning around and observing it on CPIX. So, uh, shoal behavior is, 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 a, is, a, is a great value for, uh, for skipper. Uh, during this uh, crucial approach stage, it is complicated to take a decision, and depending on the behavior, and he has a clear uh, view, and we can see history of displacement of tuna. The length of history can be adjustable in, uh, in the software. Um, this example is uh, an example uh, another example on uh, free shawl swimming approach. Uh, then we have the always vessel track here. You can observe the vessel where here before to come back to the shawl. And uh, as I said before, there is no vessel track here, vessel wake here. It's very clear. Uh, this time he has, he, the skipper has not engaged the same selection, just all uh, keeping all detection available in that 2D view. So you can see you have, we have detection here, we have wide detection here, or backstage over there. 
and and so and you you can also see that the detection can be possible from below the keel to horizontal on a, on a, on the side of the transducer. So there is no need of vertical sonder with CPEX. Um, having having a look on the video, so we approach to the uh, to the shoal, and the very important uh, feature is the uh, capability to understand that the echogram with fish as an analysis. We'll come back on that here. This, this uh, picture is very interesting. You see uh, that is a surface line. That's a water, water surface with a vessel here pinging on site. That's a vertical sonar view. Uh, this, this one is a top view, or more, more regular view from the sky, from top view. And uh, you see you can observe individual fishes with the same resolution, whatever you are here. If you are here or here, you have the same, same size uh, tuna spots that is uh, that is the value of cpix and uh, here from surface you are able to understand how deep is a fish so 20 meter is here so let's say we are talking about 20 meters is there we are talking about uh, 10 meter uh, uh, depth of the uh, tuna just below surface that's the most complicated condition to detect clearly uh, fish and you see that thanks to the resolution of narrow beams pointing to the uh, side, CPX is capable to recover fish very close to the surface. That's, uh, that's, a, good, uh, that's a very good value. Now, in, if we continue the video, you will see uh, the uh, fishing scene. Um, on board that vessel, there is also regular uh, sonars like this. So you can see the tuna catch, the tuna detection. You can see the vessel wake and noise. And you'll also see other uh, sonars. And come back to the to come back to CPIX, you see the resolution compared to the big ball, uh, red ball on a, on a regular sonar. Then skipper can really understand the quantity, if the, the concentration, the behavior of the fish in real time, and uh, playing if he has time to play with the 3D can change the uh, point of view. Uh, and here he can also observe in real time the calculation, the percentage calculation in between big fish and small fish. So that is very powerful uh, in life. There is nothing to operate on uh, on the software to 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 obtain that information in uh, real time. So uh, the only thing we it is uh, needed is to have a good screen and uh, at least two display to take advantage of all features of CPEX. So um, I wanted to propose you also another example. This example is uh, is not a regular fishing uh, tuna fishing. It is a very special example, but uh, it it illustrates very well the capability of CPIX to discriminate even in shallow water, uh, even in quite good uh, long range, uh, complex uh, situation. I explain. We are um, talking about. Um, uh, tuna farm, tuna cages here, that's the tuna cages. And inside tuna cages, there is some stock of, uh, of tuna. They farm the tuna, that's a red tuna in the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, the, the goal of the, of the testing here was to, um, to have a look and to measure uh, the quantity of uh, tuna we, they had in, in the cages. So it's the, it is a more constrained condition, cons constraints condition than the normal fishing uh, operation for tuna, but we'll see that. So the tuna cage, a dual system running with a cage on the starboard here on the sonar view, and here we come on the uh, 2D and 3D uh, processing with a calculation of the spread in, um, in a tuna. Uh, you can observe uh, the two antenna, one, one uh, head on port, one head on starboard. So for the moment, we had, we had a cage on starboard. Um, 3D view with a cage and cabling of the cage and everything. And then now the skipper will select the uh, spotting the content of the cage with the uh, virtual send selector. And virtual send selector will uh, show you, show us the uh, amount and calculate only uh, that the skipper wants to select. So you understand how it is crucial to be able to select the biomass we want to uh, calculate. Uh, it, it is, a, it is similar as a uh, regular send situation. In the net, you can also uh, use this function. It's very powerful. If we continue the video, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, now the uh, spotting, yeah, skipping only the 
uh, content of the cage. You see the cage in the sonar presentation with the biomass inside in real time. The range is about uh, 200 meters on starboard at the moment. Uh, the water depth is only 40 meters, only 40 meters water depth. And we keep a very clear um, uh, view of the cage and contained in um, uh, biomass con count inside the cage. So uh, that is a good illustration of what CPIX is uh, capable to do on uh, counting and uh, uh, biomass extraction, uh, which is a, uh, very, very, very challenging for uh, hydroacoustic technology. Demonstration of the resolution. Uh, the next one, uh, back to uh, tropical areas, tropical tuna um, in Indian Ocean. Uh, we have a typical um, layout for, for large tuna. What we have? We have, remember, we have vertical, vertical sonar view, we have horizontal sonar view. Uh, from the uh, horizontal, we, we drew here an echogram on the side. That is an echogram just below surface on the side. On this echogram, we see um, uh, bait fish close to the vessel, and uh, they have uh, some tuna. Uh, consistent tuna shoal a little bit uh, more far at, uh, at the moment at a 200 meter distance about. And that we have on the left here, it is a vertical uh, view uh, sonar with echogram. So we do, we draw two echogram, one echogram close to the surface about here and one echogram uh, contain, uh, containing the rest of the uh, water column. So then the skipper can, can understand easily what is coming on surface, what is coming deeper. And as well, we uh, provide to, uh, zoom, uh, zoom here, close surface, and zoom here, close surface, but on the side. So as a movie, uh, as we said, so there is horizontal view with a zoom, there is a vertical view and vertical discrimination of the uh, sand. That is in the net now. In the net, you see tuna fish here swimming. There is tuna close to the surface. Surface is there, so it's uh, on surface. Uh, the range is uh, 300 meters at the moment. And in the net, uh, in that net, we can have a detection here from, uh, from the vertical. Uh, from the horizontal, we can observe some bait fish in the zoom, so it's very, uh, very scattered bait, bait, free, bait fish, and you see the distance in between the bait fish. The blue uh, color it means uh, it's a, it's a, it's a related to the TS uh, strength. And uh, then uh, we can observe very clear picture in the net, that's the net profile. That's a, that's a bottom part of the net. Here it is the top part of the net. It's like that. So that's the net. The vessel is there. There is a net, so the bottom part of the net, and the highest part of the net here, which is that part. And over the net, inside the net, uh, a shoal was swimming. Here, it is a shoal of tuna swimming uh, close, to the, close to the surface, uh, quite far from the boat, uh, inside the net. And then by using the, uh, ec the zoom echogram, uh, high resolution zoom, up to 8,000 points here, we see individual tuna uh, on uh, inside the net. So at least graphically, we are able to distinguish by experience uh, what is dense tuna and what is uh, some uh, light bait fish echoes. So thanks to the zoom, we go to the individual uh, bait fish here and individual tuna as well. So it is a uh, it is tropical, uh, tropical tuna. That's a, that's a uh, acoustic view. Of course, there is another screen beside of that one. And on the other screen beside of that one, uh, the skipper has a 3D view uh, live with the sonar projection of the net, of the detection, shoal detection. As you can see, there is a fish here moving and extraction processing. And then he has a complete uh, follow-up of the holding stage, uh, following and controlling tuna behavior. You can see a tuna moving in the in the net, uh, how deep it is, and the quantity of uh, of uh, tuna fish inside the net. And um, in that story, the catch was declared by the skipper was 620 uh, individuals, and we had measurements around 580. 
on CPIX. So it is uh, quite uh, accurate and uh, very uh, graphic and very easy to use without any action, any uh, skipper operation uh, on it. So it was a mix of uh, yellowfin and uh, and some such a bait fish inside, but mostly uh, yellowfin. So um, how it is installed on board a vessel? It's not complicated installation. Uh, you have the transducer. That's, of course, that's a dummy one. I'm not very powerful, but uh, it's normally 60 kilos, so I can uh, I can play with it here. So um, the that is that is true. Is we have two uh, line of element. 256 beam, 256 beams, and we like to, if we consider the bow in your camera camera side, uh, we can consider that uh, the installation has to be 10 degrees tilt on the side, and uh, it has to be from zero to 30 degrees away to the to the bow. Um, especially for a dual system, we like to have a dual system. Then you can have 30 degrees, then you cover from from bow to 120 degrees on a port uh, azimuth. And the other one here uh, will cover from, from the bow to 120 degrees on a, on a starboard side as well. So that's the uh, installation we, we used to do. And uh, on board vessel, it is uh, like this. So one transducer below the hull, one, uh, one interface, interface box in the sonar room, and then we have a a network, uh, Ethernet, Ethernet network to the bridge uh, with two computers and at least two or ideally uh, four screens to display it. And uh, the, uh, the gondola arrangement, the, the uh, whole, uh, whole housing it can be like, like this. Here it is a perfect case of, uh, of empty kill. There is a room for that, that's perfect. 10 degrees, also always 10 degrees uh, forward. Uh, this one is uh, is an adaptation of a uh, refit of the of old old vessel. Uh, 20 degrees here, 10 degrees here, 30 degrees here, here and uh, this one is uh, yeah, just below the thruster uh, and obtaining very very good performance. This vessel has extremely good performance. So uh, it is the key is to ensure uh, good flow um, deplacement over the transducer, no turbulence as usual as any hydroacoustic system. So it is an example of very good installation working very well. So it is not, uh, it is not complicated to install. It's about uh, similar as uh, any uh, uh, big uh, sonder transducer installation, in fact. Uh, to conclude and to, to be not, not too long, I would like to, to, to uh, conclude by, um, by uh, telling you uh, CPIX is really capable to uh, improve uh, the understanding of the shoal. Uh, two main value, volume, wall volume around the boat, um, high resolution, that's un unparalleled resolution on the market. Uh, we are talking about 0 0.6 cubic meter uh, uh, 3D pixel instead of eight cubic meter. It's a huge difference uh, in terms of uh, quality as measurement and uh, capability to distinguish fish. Uh, that's, a, that's a very important point. And as we control the wall shoal, uh, even with uh, only one antenna, it's, it's fantastic. So two is, uh, is uh, perfect, of course. But um, we can control, understand, skipper can understand how the, the tuna behave. And, um, also, skipper can be really one about intruders like uh, shark or dolphin, uh, and uh, and the, the the idea is, is really to by following information from CPIX, uh, given by CPIX, to uh, reach a goal of sustainability, while uh, skipper can still improve their profitability. That's a that's a way to reconcile both uh, aspect of. Uh, of uh, fishing, it's uh, it's it's a case for tuna fishing, but also uh, that's a, a topic uh, we uh, speak uh, often for uh, for other kind of fish uh, fishing. So um, feel free to uh, contact us for uh, more uh, information. Meantime, um, now we 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 move to um, to a question. So feel free to ask a question now in live. We can uh, reply you. So I have um, I have a first question from uh, John. So uh, what is the typical range obtained on a tuna shoal? Okay, so that's, that's an important question. Uh, as I said, uh, we uh, are able to 
uh, thanks to the powerful antenna we have, we apply four kilowatts in very narrow uh, beams of 1.6 degrees each. So the, the energy is very concentrated. Even we operate high frequency, we obtain long range detection on tuna and the typical range on tuna is 500 meter. I would like to say 550 meter, but let's say officially 500, uh, 400, sorry, 400 meter, uh, even very close to the surface. That's a good question. Um, yes, second question I'm reading now, why uh, the, the vessel wake is not visible behind the, the, the vessel? That's, uh, as I've explained, it's important feature. Uh, it is because the, um, of course, CPX is capable to detect everything. If you want to see a uh, vessel wake, you can see it. You can see it, of course. Uh, because it's detected, it's reflecting. But uh, imagine, imagine you have the vessel wake here. Uh, your your CPX beams is capable to hit uh, the uh, the vessel wake with the first beam. The second beam below will pass below the wake and will be able to recover your fish over the wake. Uh, that's a very good feature. And the wake itself, if, if you don't want if you don't want to see it on the screen, you can filter it by uh, just applying the uh, processing of the biomass. And the biomass doesn't respond as, uh, as a wake. Um, yes, can we, detect, uh, can we detect under the vessel? Good question. Uh, remember that we have, uh, we have um, 120 degrees beam angle uh, so it means it means uh, not only on the side but also below the vessel we are capable to to detect and the uh, the uh, angle from the transducer is uh, 120 degrees so from uh, from here to vertical to the surface of course we don't uh, take care of the birds <laughs> over the surface but it's uh, up to surface so there is no uh, no matter of uh, to detect below the kill. Um, how, yeah, on the 3D map, how long we can visualize uh, the uh, history uh, detection? History of detection, if I understand well the question, is uh, that we can observe here. So that presentation can, can be, uh, can keep the history um, about up to about two hours. Uh, in fact, it is not a matter of time, it is duration, it is a matter of uh, quantity of detection. The system, at the moment, as is today, is capable to uh, process up to 200,000 individual detection. So uh, it's, it's for tuna fishing, it's, it's about two hours. But could be improved later on on the software and will probably rise in capability to uh, keep the story longer time. Uh, on CPIX. Ah, uh, what is the maximum speed uh, allowing good detection, optimum detection? Uh, first, first point is to obtain, to have good insulation means uh, good, uh, no flow noise on the, over the, the transducer phase. Uh, that's insulation. But if we have that, uh, we have no limitation, about no limitation, according to experience we have on, uh, on many vessels, no limitation, and we have uh, several uh, customers, skippers, uh, approaching uh, to national at uh, more than 12 knots without any uh, lose of detection, uh, less detection than uh, when the vessel is uh, just uh, stopped. Uh, Yes, can a single id CPX can be uh, changed and updated uh, as a dual system? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. It means uh, uh, a vessel can start with uh, one uh, antenna on the side uh, and uh, can be uh, upgraded with uh, one transducer more on the starboard side or the opposite, and uh, plus a computer and Everything is a plug in, uh, plug to the uh, same console, and the control console, the software here, manage both antenna as single system. 
So dual antenna, but uh, it keeps a single uh, visualization and software to handle the, um, to handle the system. Um, yes, I have another question regarding, yes, that's a very interesting question regarding the capability, capability for CPIX to be operated for scientific purpose. Uh, first of all, very good question. First of all, I want I want to uh, to say that uh, any CPX is calibrated from factory. It means one vessel or another vessel will have exactly the same capability to uh, detect and to uh, classify fish with the same response. That's uh, point number one. Uh, but more than it, than it, we uh, provide for scientific use. Um, in situ calibration facilities, that's a special software module, including in situ calibration, including um, post processing data, because uh, scientists need to, uh, to post process uh, data recorded by CPIX. That also, that's a possibility to record all raw data, not only the process point, but the, the data from the hydroacoustic signal with all the setting of the system and so on. Uh, it's, it, is, it's, it makes the ACK format and the EcoView data format as well, EVD format, uh, plus, uh, plus uh, the uh, calibration, in situ calibration with a tank tenfer. We, the scientists uh, used to move in front of the transducer to calibrate it. So that's uh, an optional pack and uh, any uh, fishing version CPIX mounted on a tuna boat uh, can be upgraded as a scientific system. So it's, it's a good opportunity, that's a good question, because it's a good opportunity to share that, uh, that rich data, accurate data uh, on a side, and it is about a unique data on the market and uh, should be a very good opportunity for scientists as well to take advantage of uh, opportunity platform with tuna vessels. Um, for the moment, um, ah yes, I have a la last question. Last question: um, How much time is needed to evaluate tuna quantity? Uh, yes, uh, depending on the range, depending on the um, time velocity, um, time distance velocity for the for the acoustic uh, hydroacoustic sound propagation, uh, we can consider that the vo wall volume at uh, 200 meter distance, this wall volume at 200 meter distance is uh, taken, uh, taken in count in about, um, about two seconds, in about two seconds. So it's very fast and it gives uh, uh, Skipper, uh, it provides Skipper with a real figure of the uh, shore behavior and the quantity in, uh, let's say, about live. Two seconds for Skipper, it's about live. So, no more questions for the moment. Um, thank you, thank you for attending at this uh, X Live for uh, tuna fishing industry. Uh, we are uh, very pleased to uh, to welcome you today for that presentation. Uh, of course, there is many other uh, topics to discuss with you, and we'll be very pleased to do it uh, as soon you want to email us or uh, contact us uh, uh, by uh, by mail, by phone, as you want. Um, uh, we will be pleased to send you the um, uh, the uh, video link to uh, watch again that uh, that seminar, and uh, feel free to uh, to take advantage of the powerful tool than, uh, as CPIX to improve your catchability and to improve as well your compliance uh, with uh, with rules. And good luck and have a good fishing. Thank you.